Just listening to WWV on 15 megahertz with my old Icom IC745, and this is one of my most favorite radios out of all my radios that I have, and has always been my main CW radio. For those who don't know what CW is, it's Morse code. Um, I say these are fairly solid radios. But they do have a few design flaws. And I wanted to start a video series addressing some of these flaws in this radio. One of the first flaws with the radio is that it is considered an all mode HF transceiver. And you see we have the uh, radio on AM. But the problem with this is that AM is only receive it does not transmit straight out of the box and it takes a bit of a modification to get it to transmit so if you wanted to use this on one of the amateur bands on in AM mode that's a little work to be performed to get this to transmit on AM but overall it's a good radio but we'll pull the top off and we'll take a look inside and look at some of the problems that we need to address with this with the top removed you can see the, the top boards and the, the radio this is not one big board but multiple smaller boards throughout the top of the radio this one here ha actually has the electronic key built in your CW filters are in here and uh, various other filters in the radio it's very well laid out radio. I enjoy working on these. They're not very hard to get to. You don't have to remove a ton of stuff to get to the board. And um, it looks like a lot of wiring. But each board only has a minimum amount of wiring going to it. And a lot of them are just jumping from one to the other. So it makes it easy to pull a board out to work on it. Over on the left hand side of the unit you'll find your marker unit your force mixer input, your bandpass filters, and your second local oscillator input. On the bottom side of the radio when you move the bottom cover you'll notice that there's a big large area that's cut out. There's not a whole lot in it. There's only two boards and the front panel board. And this is designed that you can get an optional AC to DC power supply that mounts in here and this way you don't have to run it off an external supply I do not have the AC to DC to supply and I really rather would not because it creates more heat inside the radio over on this side is your PLL board and these are your VCO can and oscillator can over on the right side is the second problem that I wanted to tell you about on the uh, this unit here. If you look up here under these ribbon cables, you'll see a battery. And this is a RAM module. And the problem with this RAM module is most radios, if your battery fails, you only use the frequencies that you program into your radio for memory storage will be the only thing that you would lose. In the ICOM 745, ICOM 751, this RAM module actually holds the program for the CPU in this radio, which means if the battery goes dead, this radio will no longer function and will be known as a brick and there's several uh, possibilities of fixing this at the moment you could uh, my battery is still good it's still holding up and I need to change it out so you can pull the board out 
temporarily solder another battery to the back side of it and desolder the original battery this way it holds the program in memory and then you can install your new battery and disconnect the second battery and plug it back in you should be good to go for another seven eight years um, do not use a DC power supply to do this because the chances are if you connect the power supply to it as soon as your solder in there and hits it it's going to uh, it could possibly short out the power feeding the RAM board thus losing all the information that's inside the radio so maybe in the second or third video we'll address either replacing this board with one of the new modules that's out or we'll look at finding a way to build an interface board to plug this board into and download the information onto the computer and save that information replace the battery and then write the information back to the prompt that's inside it's used as like an SRAM so it shouldn't be very hard um, I've seen a few uh, diagrams on the internet to show how to do this so uh, we may look at going that route or look at several different possibilities of doing it may even order a board just for fun anyway and after we do have all the fun with the rest of it we'll just install the board the next problem we have is and this radio has this problem on the 24 megahertz band and up you can be using the radio and all of a sudden it'll just go out and quit does not transmit does not receive the problem is that lies inside this can this is your VCO can I've already removed the solder so we'll see can we pop this cover back off If you look here, you'll see some trimmer capacitors. These are in the range of 6 and 12 picofarads. These capacitors are plastic. They are not ceramic capacitors. The stud is held on place on the bottom of it with a rivet. And what happens over time you know plastic ages and as it does it becomes loose it becomes brittle it expands and it causes several different problems this is the trimmer that controls the VCO voltage for the higher band 24 megahertz and up and I noticed it wiggles a little bit the other tremors do not move. This is the only band that I'm having problems with. So this tremor has definitely gone bad. These are the style tremors that we'll be going back with when we do the repair on the VCO. These are ceramic tremors and they'll hold up a whole lot better than plastic. In fact, um, I've even read where plastic tremors do not hold up for a few years. So I'll be going online this weekend and go ahead and order the, the four tremors to go here. And we'll also have another tremor up in this can that's plastic that we'll go ahead and replace. And that's for the second local oscillator. Another thing that we have problems in these radios is what's called microphonics. And what this means, this causes the radio to what's called FMing. And the problem is, is inside this VCO can, if you tap the radio and this can vibrates, you can actually hear it in the receiver. 
So after we replace these tremors, we're going to go ahead and coat this board with beeswax. And that will keep the components from vibrating and thus cut down on some of the microphonics. So what we'll do, we'll call this part one, a review of the radio. And uh, part two, we're going to address the VCO area. And I'll get those trimmers needed. And uh, we'll go through the schematic and we'll get them installed and get the radio aligned. And then uh, maybe in the next video, we'll tackle the RAM board. And uh, what I like to do is build an interface to download the SRAM out of the RAM and back it up on the computer replace the battery and then upload the information back to the board and install it and see what we come up with we also uh, look at how we replace the battery without losing the information and maybe we'll look at ordering the uh, replacement board for this unit and then in the last video we'll go through some of the mods we said can we get the mod done so it'll transmit on AM I hear this radio can be a, a decent performer on AM and um, maybe we get up on 29 megahertz and try a few uh, AM contacts on it see how that goes and we'll look at uh, removing the amplifier unit and going through it checking it out looking for stress related problems due to heat touch up some sort of joints and uh, so can we get the old girl back up and going like she's supposed to be? We say it's a very fun radio. I've really enjoyed this radio over the years and uh, great CW performer. So we'll see what we can do and get this one fixed up. So stay tuned. Plenty more videos to come. There'll be a few series on this one. And we'll see you next time.